Press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from Walkspace. There's no one specific place to learn. You know, the world is your oyster. You can learn from smallest to smallest to biggest to biggest things. And, you know, you just have to have that, that uh, spark and, you know, that, that want and that need to learn. That's what I believe in. So, no, film school is just one avenue. That's all. done like a lot of documentaries for the uh, for the government like a uh, like over 100 i read and you studied filmmaking then you work in advertising mostly creative work so where does this love for cinema or like filmmaking come from or to tell a story really? like all filmmakers uh, i've been fascinated with the 70 mm watching movies in theaters and those few hours is you know they're not yours when you sit in a theater in front of a big screen the credits start rolling the next few hours is not in your hands you're completely given to what is there in front of you and you you get engrossed you get completely immersed into the story which is being told uh, uh, on celluloid for us i think so as i said as many filmmakers uh, uh, like me and uh, uh, you know i think the the fascination towards the art form and mm -hmm. you know i uh, think is what um interested me, uh, pushed me uh, towards this whole world of storytelling, which I found it extremely fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that's where it started. And I, I was brought up in Delhi. So we used to have this place called Pragati Maidan. I think for non-Delhiites, uh, you can relate to that place where book fair happens every year. Okay. Uh -huh. book fair than every year in a huge book fair like across the world uh you know literary people authors general public come to delhi for that you know uh the book fair in delhi um so pragati maidan is a place wherein we used to have these theaters small theaters and uh, uh language you know movies of all languages used to be screened in pragati mm -hmm. maidan mm -hmm. and uh, i remember just you know tag asking my and uh, irritating my friends saying let's go watch a film there and you know uh, we used to watch every language film. I used to watch, uh, I used to love watching uh, other languages, so Spanish, French, Chinese, German. We had subtitles, so I think I, I got used to the subtitles as a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I think that's, and I was fascinated by how uh, films are made in, you know, different countries. Uh, I, I fell in love with Afghan films and, you know, when I was watching that and uh, I was attending film festivals in Delhi. Uh, so I was watching a lot of uh, films across the border, like all the other countries and all of that. So it just somehow, um, you know, uh, you know, I wanted to learn. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the, it's a natural progression, right? So, you know, you you are fascinated. The next step towards that is to learn how to make yeah. those films. Um, so I think my, the next process was, you know, wanting to educate myself, uh, and, uh, equip myself with that skill set. And, uh, um, I did my mass communication in, uh, 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 you know, uh, in Francis, St. Francis in Hyderabad. And uh, post which I applied for film schools across US and UK. I happened to go on a holiday to London and I loved, uh, uh, you know, what fascinated me is the art, uh, mm -hmm. which was taken very seriously in London. And it, it's like an art form. Filmmaking is not an art, you know, is not a commercial. It is a commercial mm -hmm. entity, but I saw a whole um, a group and, you know, art, uh, uh, artistic people and they were treating film as an art form and I wanted to learn that before I dive into commercial uh, you know uh, form of filmmaking I wanted to understand the roots of it mm -hmm. and you know and also uh, you know Goldsmiths College studying in Goldsmiths College and experimenting and understanding the uh, the whole you know aspect of behind the scenes how do we do it where mm -hmm. the magic happens and all of that was quite an eye-opener um, I was exposed to even uh, better filmmakers and, uh, you know, classics. Um, and, you know, we had to, uh, in poetry, uh, we say, in literature and poetry, we say reading between the lines, mm -hmm. wherein you need to understand what a poem is. So you need to read between the lines. Okay. So I think it was more about understanding uh, the thought process behind making that film for the filmmakers. So film school taught me how to read, uh, you know, uh, the thought process of a filmmaker in making that film. And, you know, which only uh, till date has been helping me, uh, you know, with my work.
Yes. So, so in that sense, do you prefer someone who comes from a film background, like someone someone who's formally educated, or uh, is that something that that helps no, you? No, no, no. Yes. See, as, as I said, I equipped myself with the skill set. Mm-hmm. But what I do with my skill set, uh, you know, outside of the film school, is a whole new destiny and mm-hmm. a whole new world altogether. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if I learned it one year, and you know, my uh, my colleague or my counterpart you know, mm-hmm. might have learned it on the set for mm-hmm. a year or two years. So, uh, uh, you know, I had uh, that, as I said, I had that interest in me to understand world cinema, you know, to learn more about world cinema, hence the film school. Um, otherwise, I think uh, uh, if on an, I think, you know, uh, alternate uh, mm-hmm. space or, but I also might have learned it on the go, on the set. Um, but yeah, I chose a film school. As I said, you know, there's no, one specific place to learn mm-hmm. you know the world is your oyster you can learn from smallest to smallest to biggest to biggest mm-hmm. things and you know you just have to have that, that uh, spark and you know that that want and that need to learn mm-hmm. that's what i believe in so no film school is just one avenue that's okay. all so yeah. in your work the one that i'm most familiar with is gods of Ramapuri, right so i wanted to know maybe a little bit about the history of it how did it happen or like uh, what, what why would you choose something that is that ambitious for uh, mm-hmm. a project right? that do yeah. okay um i think um, as i said you know i i just had this natural progression uh, trying to experiment and uh, i'm an independent filmmaker um, you know um, and it's always i think the drive is what keeps us going drive to do something uh, we've been doing advertisements for uh, three to four years the drive to do something bigger i think it, it just comes naturally to all of us that you know we would like to ex- experiment explore more than what you've been doing so i think from advertisements to uh, 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 you know the corporate work it was a natural progression that uh, you know uh, uh, the web space three years back uh, the whole digital uh, content was very new mm-hmm. and OTTs were just starting up. And uh, so that was a natural progression for me in terms of trying to pitch, uh, telling stories on a different platform. And what was exciting was there were no barriers as mm-hmm. such. We could experiment with uh, uh, stories and genres and, you know, uh, narratives, uh, the length of the content, which was very interesting for me. And I was uh, I was very excited. So hence I started pitching and, you know, I started understanding if there are uh, collaborators who are as, uh, um, I think, you know, on the same page as uh, me and in that way. But yes, but God, um, it, it was a mixture of what we wanted to tell and what also the audiences wanted to see. You know, I, I could see that specific genre which was missing in the market. And, you know, uh, I always say this, that, you know, filmmakers have to uh, also have to have that, uh, you know, a, a, a tinge of a reality check in terms of, you know, what we're going to make, uh, you know, what kind of audiences are going to attract. Is that something that the market or the audiences are in need for? For that mm-hmm. point and how much can you push the envelope you can't be completely uh you know uh, uh you can't get the genre which audiences are not ready for you might be a little more early in the market you know uh i always have that uh, in mind when i uh when i pick up my projects and if i have a story to tell so uh god was uh, a consciously made decision that it should have both uh, in terms of the genre, uh, which will uh, will be easy for the audiences to, um, you know, digest. At the same time, let's just, um, you know, wrap it or let's just present it that, you know, no other digital content in South has, mm-hmm. you know, uh, put it across yet at that time, at that time mm-hmm. I meant. Um, so my conversation with my team members was all about this, like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the constant hunger to be, uh, you know, to be, to stand out so that, you know, because I think if you don't have that constant hunger to stand out, uh, you're going to get lost in the crowd, yeah. you know, uh, in the end of the day, you need to ask the question to yourself that if I'm, if I'm doing, am I different? We mm-hmm. live in a world which is highly competitive and, you know, uh, uh, so it's like, a you need to keep a balance. You, you know, you have to be happy with what you're doing at the same time, you know, uh, you need to know. Uh, you know who you're making this for also so um, I don't say a daring 
attempt. I would just say it's an honest attempt. <laughs> it's an honest attempt. <laughs> no, but yeah. the idea was that it's like a multi-decade narrative about a, like a culture. You're introducing a whole new culture yes. and a group of people. This we were all hungry. <laughs> I think we were all hungry. We were all of us. I think, as I said, we were those first movers into. Mm-hmm. such genres and ott we had a, a good number of uh, ott content before us mm-hmm. but there was no um, you know reference point for us saying that mm-hmm. we have to be like this our reference point was all bollywood based uh, and hollywood based uh, content and series mm-hmm. so you know i think it was exciting that we can make a difference if everything falls into place mm-hmm. we can make a difference is what i think all of us uh, had in our mind my whole team i meant all of us had that so honest attempt is what i would like to <laughs> modestly put so uh, in yeah. that in that sense like what is uh, so if someone brings a project to you someone's pitching to you right what is the first thing you uh, gravitate towards or what is the thing that you're looking for there's something you're already looking for right um two things hmm? first is am i itching to tell the story is this mm-hmm. a story that has to be told you know am i um you know i have to have that drive within myself oh this is a story i have to tell the audience this is a story i have to you know i want to experiment with mm-hmm. and you know uh, uh, in that manner that's the first one the second one uh, would be um you know it has to have a right mix of uh, you know uh, uh, art and commerce is what we say it needs mm-hmm. to have both Uh-huh. you know uh, we don't make films to be just you know lying in the cans right we make films so that we can take it to the audiences for us to take it to the audiences it has to have a fine balance between art and commerce this is something i tell all my colleagues uh, and you know uh, uh, producing uh, people you know students who like produce in the future um, you know finances and creative put together art and commerce is what makes a film yeah in that sense so when you want you selected the film right or uh, the project so how hands on are you mm-hmm. as a producer like in the sense are you uh, as creatively inclined as the person who's making the thing or like how hands on are you on set or off set kind of my work majorly is still pre production i believe that if i've entrusted uh, a person a creative person as mm-hmm. the director of uh, the you know uh, the film Mm-hmm. i need to trust i have to trust that person so all my inputs all my discussions uh, all the creative sparring that has to happen will happen during pre production i am a silent spectator on the set when it comes uh, uh, to uh, you know as a producer i'm a silent i'm a silent spectator and as much as possible try being useful and handy on the set <laughs> so my work i think i i like to believe that you know um i mean you know uh, uh, you know again it's a fine balance uh, mm-hmm. you need to i like to be a team player uh, you know the the whole uh, how a producer has to be it's not like i want to redefine it's just that you know you know i just want to set my own rules when it comes to producing uh, uh, content so um i am um, i have my opinions i have because as i said i always say this the producer's job is you know it's like a birds eye view mm-hmm. right so from a birds eye view is where you can actually know what the reality is mm-hmm. so um you know i i pride myself with the fact that i can see that and i'm able to um, communicate the same to my team members who are extremely engrossed and you know in in the process so much that you know you don't step back and see what the reality is sometimes so uh, you know uh, i see it that way and uh, my uh, either my opinions or my suggestions are something that you know uh, if i believe in something very strongly i'll put it across strongly otherwise i'll leave it to the discretion of the director so as i said like, i i just be handy yes <laughs> more like railings than driving the seat basically absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> all, all is a collaborative art uh, uh-huh. i think all of us are in this very similar all of us have a similar vision all of us have our own roles to play and uh, you know the whole the train needs to go in tandem with all the bogies and all you know everything together is when you reach a destination so <laughs> it's yeah <laughs> so uh Another thing specific to God. What was maybe your most memorable moment 
before after of making the 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 whole the show um i think getting such kind of a show greenlit uh, as an independent producer three years back was itself a you know a confidence booster for me uh with regards to i felt as if i'm you know um a new avenue has opened up and you know i can i can go you know i can go all in i can uh, i can you know so the happiness was a little boundless when it got green lit and at the same time there was a huge pressure on my shoulders in terms of making sure that this is uh, done in the timelines and in the budgets and with the right team how different shall i you know uh, put this team uh, together you know how different the content has to be how novel the content has to be how commercial the content has to be you know you know you have so many thoughts and you need to put all of them together uh, to make this so i think the first would be you know just getting this green lit itself was quite mm-hmm. memorable for that but uh, it just quickly got washed away with the pressure of making it um but i post that uh, um we shot out you know uh, for the whole series 80% of it was shot outdoor oh. and uh, we were we were searching for this right dharmapuri you know where do we go that we can completely create our world of dharmapuri so uh, we went on a recce mad recce for a week 10 days i just remember going on this recce just state to state just trying to find our dharmapuri where our dharmapuri can be set in um our head head of the departments all of us we just drove uh, yeah. from state to state and we were trying to find it we we reached hampi and i've never been to hampi before that was the first time i, I you know i'd been to hampi and i was i was astonished to see the kind of place hampi is the rocky water rocky terrain and greenery and blue sky beautiful it was beautiful so i think shooting in that area around hampi anegundi hospet um, you know the whole team mm-hmm. uh, 100 plus team members were uh, you know there in uh, anegundi for uh, close to 45 to 50 days uh-huh. and you know uh, so i think i know for the fact that the last day in anegundi was so emotional for everyone we didn't want to leave the place even people mm-hmm. there were so um you know heartwarming they were so welcoming and you know uh, i remember going to people's houses and eating lunch dinner while shooting this to invite us and you know uh, it was beautiful i think shooting in hampi uh, anegundi was something extremely memorable for us mm-hmm. and i think the last day our last schedule was actually in uh, ballari mines mm-hmm. and that was the last day in ballari mines all of us were covered in suit and you know uh, uh, i think all of us i think there was only one layer of black on all of us <laughs> and we were it was you know it was very uh, funny because we were happy that you know in the end now we get to make uh, you know it's it's one big step which has you know which we crossed to make this a reality at the same time as a team it it was a last day for us to you know work together this huge team so i think that last day was uh, in balari mines was quite memorable i think it, it's still very fresh in my mind even now so yeah <laughs> like there's a lot of detail in the way you're describing it so it seems very much <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, something yeah. Uh, a little more general right like in in business terms right now because of the whole corona situation like the quarantine and stuff right the ott market has grown like to a level that i've never even thought that could be possible and it's been accelerated so far so how do you see like has the infrastructure or like the production model become a lot better has conversations and communication with ott become easier in any way or uh, what do you think about yes absolutely i think um um lockdown has just forced all of us to be uh, in between four walls and inside our homes and you know we did we didn't get the chance to go you know get into production and you know uh, uh, make new mm-hmm. films and the theaters were shut what do we do i mm-hmm. think there was a natural people just diverted uh, towards video on, on demand on mm-hmm. otts and on phones and the tvs and all of that so um all those independent films which were uh, f- you know finding it hard mm-hmm. to get into the uh, the regular distribution format had found 
uh, you know, uh, a way out, uh, found a way out to reach out a to hope. the audiences, so, a hope, and yeah. you know, and that did get realized, and you know, their yeah. dream did get realized by all those films and series which got released during right. that time. I think uh, uh, that's very good, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a insurgence. There was uh, there was suddenly a demand for ready-made content. And after that, uh, you know, I think uh, because people started watching, there has been an exponential rise in the percentage of people watching on OTT platforms that only, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, it just progressed towards uh, wanting more of content and giving out uh, more content from the OTT uh, to the producers and the filmmakers to make that. So it's always good. It's like a chain. I think mm -hmm. uh, it's always good. I think more work, more stories to tell, and you know, uh, it's always good. Um, I think, you know, it's all. But at the same time, uh, how till how you know till when can we stay inside? Uh, you know, uh, closed doors. Yeah. Some or the other day, we have to go out, and you know, going to theaters is part of a social experience. Mm -hmm. It's a social experience. It's part of the you know, it's ingrained into a social fabric. Yeah. So we go out, we will mm -hmm. go out, we will, uh, you know, go out to watch movies uh, outside in the theaters. And, you know, uh, uh, I think in general, humans are very social, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we have to go out, we have to meet people. And, you know, you go with your friends, your family to just for a small, you know, outing and you go watch mm -hmm. a movie. So um, I see that there's going to be a balance. I think I, I see that they'll coexist theaters uh, and uh, OTT platforms will coexist for sure. And, you know, just, I'm just furthering, I'm going beyond uh, the question you just asked because I already spoke about theaters here. Um, because I think it's a fear most of us, uh, I think most of the uh, makers have that, you know, will we have full capacity? And uh, uh, I think these days we have full capacity. I've been hearing that theaters are running full. There are movies being released you know, and all of that. So I think the question I was asked a couple of months back is actually, I, I did say this, that, you know, mm -hmm. we will find a way to coexist. OTTs mm -hmm. and theatres will find a way to coexist. And I think that's quite evident at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And uh, in this, uh, from the other perspective, right, I, I feel like maybe the taste of the audience has changed slightly. Do you think that is going to affect the production model made the theaters or OTT? Maybe the things that have been greenlit could be maybe different than the stuff that used to be greenlit before? Do you have anything? Um, I think, you know, I also foresee when you, you, you're right. I foresee that there are certain genres mm -hmm. that you look forward to going to the theater to watch for that visual mm -hmm. experience on a 70 mm with the Dolby, with the sound, the 5.1, you know, and all of that. So, um, I, you know, I think it is going to be like that. There are certain genres and there's certain kind of uh, content which is going to be made for OTT and there's certain genres and content which will be made for the theatres. So because, as I said, you know, as, uh, you know, as an ardent uh, film buff, I love to go to watch uh, to theatres for a basic reason that you, you have an environment which is created for you, which exists for you there. It's, it's, it's there, you know, either it's, it's completely audiovisual for us. It's, uh, you know, it's extremely, uh, you know, uh, you immerse yourself in that. Sitting in the, you know, in the home, at home and watching, you don't immerse yourself, you're watching it. It's good content, okay, you know, it's a nice story. But you don't say, oh, the sound was very nice. You know, the experience was very nice. You don't say that. So, you know, um, I think genres and the kind of uh, content which is going to be made is, will be, I think distributed or will be dedicated to each of their own. So yeah, I see that happening. Uh, I wanted to ask about your influences, right? From a filmmaking or production uh, perspective, who would be your biggest influence? <laughs> okay, all right. Your movie show, <laughs> your person. Um, see, as I said, I've learned a lot from uh, you know, uh, uh, from watching is mm -hmm. what I told you. So I think as a child and a teenager who was exposed to a lot of films, um, I remember watching Charlie Chaplin's films, how in a silent genre, you know, they're able to tell a story so beautifully and so aptly. Um, 
I have been a big fan of Mani Ratnam sir from Anjali to uh, you know uh, all the films. I remember Anjali very very clearly, and uh, um, I think uh, from then on, uh, Forrest Gump. I, mm-hmm. I think Tom Hanks was one of the first few American actors I followed and started watching his films. Um, I think from there uh, it went on to. That was my initial influence. Watching those uh, films was mm-hmm. my um, initial influence. From there, it went on to uh, film school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know how film school influenced me, how my classmates, my tutors, people that I worked with. I've done odd jobs on uh, short films in London. So all the people, I think, um, my you know my tribe in mm-hmm. London influenced me. From there, um, you know. Uh, in film school itself, you you lo- you know I've learned a lot about Akira Kurosawa, Jordan Godard, all the world uh, filmmakers, uh, you know uh, Quentin Tarantino. Um, so, you know these people influenced me a lot uh, with their you know process towards. I'm only talking about towards filmmaking. I meant like you know yeah. towards uh, uh, you know uh, you know wanting to be in the space and you know mm-hmm. uh, do my job and do what I love doing. Um, Post which uh, I think women filmmakers, Mira Nair, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think was uh, Salam Bombay, uh, Monsoon Wedding. I think I was in love with her uh, narratives, narrative style and how she's able to reach to the global audiences at one go. Even Mm -hmm. when OTT platforms weren't there, even then, you know, we didn't have VODs, we didn't have, you know, uh, but I think she was sitting in uh, a US, She's from US, so sitting in US, she's able to reach the whole, uh, the other countries, the whole world with her film. So that's powerful for me. And I, it was yeah. quite, uh, you know, she influenced me a lot. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the recent uh, film, Sudha Kongara Ma'am. So I think, you know, uh, uh, she, um, but I think utmost would be, I think on an everyday basis, on an everyday basis, my team. Mm-hmm. My team influences me because it's always, you know, uh, Apart from understanding your own craft, we need to also understand the craft of our team members. And, you know, there's an everyday learning, everyday, uh, it's a cycle. You need to learn every day. So my team influences me a lot. I think it's a natural, I think, yeah, everyone gets influenced by their team. So, yes. <laughs> Coming to the team, yes. what, you, what do you get working on next? If your audience would love to know or anything oh, you could reveal. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So um, it's called Unheard. Mm-hmm. It's uh, uh, it's the story. Uh, it's it's actually conversations. Um, I've been a fan of coffee and cigarettes, uh, mm-hmm. and I've always wanted to watch uh, and make in co- you know Jam something Jam with Jam. regards to conversation. Yes, so Jim yes. Jamush, uh, <laughs> yes. Mm. yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, but so these are these conversations between six people. Mm-hmm. happening in Hyderabad uh, during pre-independence era. Like it starts in 19 or early 1900s to 1949. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I think many of us know that Hyderabad uh, wasn't, uh, uh, you know, part of the uh, independence time because uh, Nizam wanted a three nation theory. You know, uh, Hyderabad was uh, uh, incorporated into the Indian, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole India uh, in 1949, two years after independence. So uh, till 1949, so early 1900 to 1949, these conversations happen Mm -hmm. between six people, like their ideologies, their perspectives. So these are uh, unheard stories, unheard perspectives of unsung heroes of freedom. Yeah, so it's called Unheard. (laughs) Uh (laughs) We're going to start with the screenings from next month, wherein we'd like to our uh, folks to watch. Yes, we're done. Our first copy is ready. Wow. Yes, Maybe. we're ready to. Uh, <laughs> we it was it was done in an extremely, um, you know, we started in September. Mm-hmm. I think my whole team was itching to start making something. All of us were sitting at home for more than a year by then, mm-hmm. or you know, nine months, ten months. So I used uh, utilize this lockdown time to write a lot of stories. Uh, you know, I had three or four, uh, four I think writers' rooms wherein four stories were being churned during lockdown. So this is one of the story which got churned and made and it's ready right now can't wait to watch yeah <laughs> apart from that i have season two of god 
So that we are working on right now. The story is being written and we work, we're quite excited. We're looking at a year end release for that. So we're quite excited. So you that. want to produce it this year, finish it this year? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Awesome. <laughs> That's always very ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's always so, good. <laughs> so finally, one thing I wanted to ask was, like, see, there's, there's a lot of filmmakers who always dream for a producer who thinks from a filmmaking perspective, right? So I would uh, like you to give an advice to future um, upcoming producers one thing that they should concentrate on or think about when coming into production maybe? Um, as I said, I think uh, one thing I tell myself is be epic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, every work, every work, uh, you know, art piece that you uh, produce has to be epic. Mm -hmm. The ambition should be that for sure. I think, uh, uh, and you know, you know, when you're learning your, as I said, when you're learning your craft, mm -hmm. I think you also need to learn the craft of others, how they're doing it. And, you know, it's a teamwork mm -hmm. and, you know, um, uh, one can be ambitious, but one shouldn't be reckless. So there's mm -hmm. a difference between being ambitious and, you know, being reckless. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's, that's that. And just, I think, believe in yourself, your intuitions, uh, I think all of us have that. We believe in ourselves. We have that uh, perseverance and patience mm -hmm. to follow uh, because this is not an easy place to be in. It tests your patience. It tests your perseverance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, passion, perseverance, and patience, I guess. There are three P's. I've just coined it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. yeah. Yes. So. I think I'm done yeah. with my questions, but that was really great, like a great conversation. You're done with your questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Nice talking to you. That was uh, really great. It's really, a... It was a fun time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.